Not so long ago, NASA released a somewhat intriguing image of a star system known as WL20, an extremely young star system located inside the molecular cloud known as Rho of Ayukai that's approximately 400 light years away from us. A cloud known for containing a lot of different baby stars, or essentially stars that are still developing and still growing. But one of these star systems here turned out to be a little bit more unusual. When the scientists zoomed in on this, to their surprise they discovered that there are actually two stars here, extremely close to one another, but with disks and jets basically parallel to each other, pointing in exactly the same way and in exactly the same location, which is why for basically decades now it was actually believed to be a single star and nobody knew or could believe that there were two stars here instead. But this turned out to be a pair of objects that possibly formed approximately 2 million years ago. And though this was kind of unusual, what's even more exciting is the more recent discovery of actually a lot of these unusual parallel jets discovered in another cloud, once again completely by accident. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're basically going to talk about the discovery of these unusual parallel jets, why they most likely form this way, and how this actually seems to be a somewhat universal phenomenon that's still somewhat difficult to explain, even going beyond stars, into galaxies and the universe itself. But I guess first let's start with the picture itself. And here this is an image of a nebula known as the Serpent Nebula, a relatively famous reflection nebula that has recently been imaged by the James Webb in several frequencies. And here we're essentially just seeing various gas and various dust particles reflecting the light from somewhat powerful stars in the center, with this entire region essentially representing one of the youngest star-forming regions, but in this case located approximately 1600 light years away from us. And so during these recent observations, while the astronomers were mapping various star systems, the power of the James Webb Space Telescope allowed them to also map several protostellar regions, including various outflows or essentially various protostellar jets. And this is of course not something that's unusual and something that was expected. As a matter of fact, pretty much most molecular clouds out there contain a lot of these objects and that's how usually various star systems form in the beginning. But as they started to map these outflows, they did discover something that was really unexpected. A relatively large number of them seemed to point in a relatively similar direction or essentially had somewhat similar orientation. And that's despite distances, 50 to 70 light years away from one another. And though they were not pointed at exactly the same region, here the actual difference was relatively small. Which by itself did present a bit of a mystery. Why exactly were they doing this? And why is it that we don't actually see this pretty much anywhere else? Because usually in a lot of other star systems, such as for example in the Orion Nebula or in the previously mentioned Rho of Ayakai, the overall jet orientation is never really this similar. Typically the stars are oriented in a lot of different ways and will generally have somewhat random distribution. And so what exactly is happening here and why do so many here point in a similar direction? Well obviously there's no direct answer yet, but there is quite a solid explanation that might explain what's going on here. And all of this of course relates to how usually all of this interstellar gas collapses and starts to form baby stars. Here this usually results in the much more rapid rotation as a result of the collapse of the angular momentum, with all of this resulting in relatively powerful magnetic fields, which then result in two things. First, all of this extra momentum has to be removed somehow in order for this whole system not to fall apart. And second, a lot of these powerful magnetic fields start to entangle and start to snap in the process which surprisingly results in the production of these jets. And not surprisingly, this is exactly the same mechanism that produces jets around neutron stars and black holes. And so in order for all of this gas to continue moving, and in order for these magnetic fields to eventually stabilize, they essentially require the production of these powerful jets. And all of these jets are relatively easily visible in this image by the James Webb. Although in this image, all of the jets appear red, because of the presence of molecular hydrogen and quite a lot of carbon monoxide. But since in this particular cloud, the cloud itself seems to be moving in the same direction and is generally collapsing in the same direction as well, all of its angular momentum and of course all of its magnetic fields are basically pointed in the same direction as well. And so here in the region of about 50 light years, 
we essentially are going to be observing relatively similar magnetic lines and a relatively similar angle for the angular momentum spin. And that's because this is a relatively young nebula, possibly only 1 million years old, with a lot of these new stars very likely even younger, maybe about 100,000 years old or even less. And so one of the main reasons so many are pointed in the same direction is really just because they're still young and they have not been influenced by anything else in order to change their orientation. Or basically, in a lot of older systems, quite a few different forces can actually shift the direction of these outflows in just a few hundred thousand years. For example, if it's a binary system, both of the stars will eventually influence each other, with all of these outflows eventually transitioning. Yet here, because of the youth and also very likely because this is a relatively dense cloud, all of the stars basically formed with relatively similar properties pointed in the same direction and mostly influenced by the forces inside the cloud. But with time, all of this will become randomized and they're all probably going to be pointing all over the place. Which technically has already started happening for some of the other stars slightly farther away. As a matter of fact, in this image, out of approximately 20 stars, it's really 12 stars in a relatively similar region that seem to be oriented somewhat similarly. And all 12 seem to be the youngest, with the actual jets very likely only starting 200 to maybe 1400 years ago. So these are literally baby stars. And for the scientists studying this, this is also super exciting because this is one of the first images of these so-called protostellar outflows. The jets that then shaped the star system for thousands and even millions of years. But in this case, it looks like this has just started, which is why they all seem to point in the same direction. But in this study, the researchers really believe that it's the magnetic fields that most likely define the direction and thus assist in the evolution of these baby stars. But with time, the magnetic fields will no longer be as prominent and it's the other forces, such as gravity and pressure, that are going to be evolving these systems afterwards. And so over time, over thousands of years of existence, eventually all of these stars are going to start spinning in a very different way, which explains why we've never seen this before. Or have never seen this in star systems. Because almost like a decade ago, scientists have actually discovered something else somewhat interesting in regards to distant galaxies. By observing various super distant quasars, one of the most surprising discoveries was the fact that quasars and their jets also seem to be aligned in a somewhat similar orientation depending on the location and depending on their position inside the cosmic web. And here too, it seems to be the result of powerful magnetic fields, although in this case, the filament is no longer just a typical molecular cloud. Here, it's cosmological gas, primordial gas, that forms an enormous cosmic web with these two forming unusual alignments of basically the largest structures in the universe, where many different jets seem to be also parallel to each other. But in this case, the distance is not just 50 or 70 light years, it's actually measured in billions of light years, making this a somewhat unusual but somewhat universal phenomenon that we basically know nothing about and that we're still exploring, still discovering, and will very likely be learning about for many decades to come. Nevertheless, these unusual discoveries from the distant universe, along with the discoveries much closer to us, highlight the important interplay between gravity, pressure and magnetic fields and how all of this helps various stars and galaxies evolve over time and in case of various star systems, how it then helps them acquire certain properties. Because as you can probably imagine, four and a half billion years ago, something very, very similar happened to the solar system. And for some reason, the solar system acquired just the right properties to eventually form planet Earth. And so studying how these outflows influence the evolution of star systems is really important in order to understand the evolution of stars and the formation of certain types of planets. But at the moment, we basically know very little, which means that we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future studies. Until then, a somewhat unusual discovery and I guess somewhat unexpected, but a discovery that helps us realize how when it comes to the formation of stars and even galaxies, the actual phenomena are relatively similar and do involve an interplay of a lot of different phenomena all at once. And so once we learn something else about this, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, 
Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.